So, Dr. Peterson, I have a lot of questions that arise from your comments at the Balfour 100 event, your M103 video, your recent discussion with Ayan Hershey Ali, and your comments on Islam in the West in general. And in your comments, there's this common theme that one of these things is not like the other. You put the Judeo-Christian tradition on the one side and Islam on the other, specifically the, quote, complex problem of Islam and the, quote, as a, quote, totalizing system. And before I go further, let me state that if hypothetically a final analysis of Islam resulted in as total a denunciation as your analysis of postmodernism or neo-Marxism, I wouldn't be personally offended at all. This isn't a, a, a personal question. In your recent interview with Ayan Hershey Ali, she said, Western values are superior to Islamic law and Islamic values. I agree with that, basically, certainly in the context of, let's say, current global affairs. I'll skip the quotes from a Reason magazine interview, but you should read them because Hers is a worldview which is very much the West versus Islam, not radical yeah. Islam, but Islam, including necessarily the military option. So my question is, at the level of psychological significance of these stories, at the level of mythology and archetype, how is Islam so different from the Judeo-Christian tradition? You know, because Adam, Adam, Eve, Hava, Satan, Shaitan, so on and so forth, everything from the fall to the flood, a lot of what you discuss in this lecture series is necessarily part of Islam as well. And in fact, I think one of the strongest criticisms of Islam is that it's perhaps pretty unoriginal. You know, tonight you said that the moral presuppositions of a culture are instantiated in its stories. I see a lot of the same stories. So current global affairs aside, I'm asking at the deepest levels, how different are these stories and the moral presuppositions? Okay, well, that's, that's a killer question. <clears throat> well, okay, so the first thing I would say is fundamentally I don't know. And so part of the reason that I'm, one of the things I'm planning to do is to have a series of discussions. And plenty of people have contacted me about discussing with Ayan Herzi Ali. Because as you know, she has powerful and serious foes. And they're not happy with her black and white distinction. And so, now I read Infidel, and I really liked that book. Like I, I, my sense was that she, she was a heroine. Now, what that means in relationship to Islam, that's a different story because she came out of a, uh, like a, a totalitarian, let's say, family structure in a relatively totalitarian society. And you could make the case that there's a correspondence between that and Islam, and you could make the case that there isn't. And, and of course, that's the critical issue. And so there's a couple of things that I can't wrap my head around with wrap my head around easily in relationship to Islam. And so one is what I see as the failure to separate church from state. And that's a problem. Now, it may not be a problem as such, but it's certainly a problem in relationship to the relation between Islam and the West because we separate church from state. Now, there's fundamentalists in the United States, Christian fundamentalists, who think that that separation is a mistake. So it's not, only, it's not only an idea that's rooted in Islam that those should be united. But it's definitely a problem with regards to our coexistence because that's a fundamentally different presumption. Okay, so that's problem number one. Problem number two for me, and again, this may be a consequence of my ignorance, which I'm trying to rectify. Muhammad was a warlord. And I, I don't know what to do about that fact. Like, one thing you can say about Christ, hypothetically, let's say, I'm not talking about a historical reality necessarily, although I'm not denying it either, is that of all the things he was, warlord was definitely not one of them. And I don't know what to do about that. And so, I don't know how to reconcile that. And I don't know how to reconcile, like, not only was... Muhammad a warlord, which I don't think is an unreasonable thing to proclaim. The expansion that he initiated was unbelievably successful. I mean, within 600 years, it was the biggest empire the world had ever seen. And it demolished Byzantine Christianity, which is something that Western people don't even know. You know, I've read thinkers who said that the West was so traumatized culturally, let's say, by the demolition of Byzantine Christianity that we can't even study it now. And so, I don't know if that's true, but I don't know that it's not true either. 
And the Buddhists were wiped out of Afghanistan. Um, and we saw that echoed in the Taliban's destruction of those great Buddhist monuments. And so, so what I'm hoping is that there's a bridge. There better be a bridge. And that's why I want to have these discussions, because I'd like to understand if there's a bridge. And so lots of people have sent me people who I should talk to, who, who they think represent Islam far better than I and Herzi Ali. And perhaps they're correct, and hopefully I'll get an opportunity to talk to them. Because I would like to know why, I would like to know if what I think is wrong. Because if it's wrong, it's important that I know it's wrong. But at the moment, I don't, A, I don't know it's wrong, and B, I don't see I'm not sure what it signifies. So, and I don't think anyone is sure, right? Because we have this entangle, entangling of the civilizations. You know, and there's other things too, like I'm not very happy with the Saudi Arabs and the Wahhabis. I don't think they're our allies. I don't see how any Western woman can possibly think that they're our allies. And I'm not happy with the fact that the petrodollars that we send them are transformed in substantial part into the kind of propaganda that's definitely a threat to the West. And I'm not very happy with the fact that our politicians appear stupidly blind to that. Now, that may again be a consequence of my ignorance. It's certainly possible. But those are the sorts of things that that I can't reconcile, and so you know, I've seen, I've also seen parallels between the ideas that I'm presenting here and other religious traditions, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism. It's harder for me to bridge the gap with Islam, and I'm not sure why that is. I, I think it has something to do with the things that I just laid out. Now. What I don't know about Islam would fill very many volumes, many of which I have sitting on my shelves at home right now because I want to do the reading, you know, as I progress through this. But 